With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931 528 8050. Home sweet home. Hello everyone and welcome to the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Marcus Satterfield, Tennessee Tech head coach, Dylan Vazano, your host for the show. Golden Eagles, yes, they will finally be back in Cookville this Saturday night inside Tucker Stadium to take on Eastern Kentucky with a 6 o'clock kickoff. Golden Eagles have been on the road for three consecutive games in this past Saturday. Coach, it was a 44-23 loss to UT Martin at Martin, but that wasn't necessarily indicative of the way that the game actually played out. And you guys put together a heck of a comeback. Yeah, we you know we challenged them at halftime to you know told them you don't have to lose anymore. Like just relax and go play. And they did a great job of really coming together after Yeedy's run after he you know knocked over a couple of those guys, broke some tackles. I think the sideline really got. Uh, energized and uh, we come out swinging in the second half and almost pulled it off. You know, they returned the onside kick and then an interception pick six on the last throw of the game that kind of separated the score, made it look a lot worse than it really was. You ready to take a look at the highlights? I guess so. All right, let's do it. Let's roll the film. Introducing this week's game highlights. That is brought to you by Wendy's of Cookville. What well, was another hot and steamy afternoon, hum humidity as well, with temperatures hovering in the mid-90s over in Martin, Tennessee. Skyhawks won the toss they elected to receive, and as we are about to find out, the Golden Eagles were more than okay with it. Gunnar Holcomb, this is the third offensive play of the game. He goes up top, Londell Lee, but nope. There's Deontay Wilson to pick it off, and Wilson starts to maneuver, make his way. He's dipping, he's diving, and coach, great field position for TTU. Yeah, phenomenal. I mean, we're, we've got a, a knack of doing this, starting out fast. We just need to learn how to finish with the same energy we start. That's a great play by Deontay. Golden Eagles now with the 24, so a short field. Five plays later, it is Yeedy Thainrat. He goes in for the touchdown, second rushing touchdown of the year. Tennessee Tech would mix, miss the extra point. They go up 7-0. Martin, they get the football back. We fast forward five minutes to go in the first quarter on a second and seven from the 14. Jamie Bowe, their leading rusher coming in. He gets a touchdown, so 7-6 as we go to the second quarter. Golden Eagles with a three and out, their first drive. So back comes UT Martin. New quarterback Troy Cook, he goes deep to Greg McKillian, 40 yards. It's a touchdown, Coach, on the first play of their drive. Yeah, and that all goes back to the kickoff return after their touchdown. We get a penalty, one of two penalties on kickoff return in the first half, which we started the drive at the minus seven. We go three and out. We punt it. They get the ball in a short field and a big play, and uh, we're down. Golden Eagles now in a third down and 10, the next drive. Bird saw the quarterback. He led Tech in rushing 56. And, Coach, that was his longest run of the afternoon, 15 yards for a first. Just, you know, all schedule plays. He's gotten really good at those and extending plays and giving us a chance when the pocket breaks down. Gives a chance. And then a 42-yard field goal. Nick Madonia, his longest kick of the year. So the Golden Eagles at this point, they get three back. Back comes, though, and maybe one of the big plays of the game. This was a fourth and eight at the 41-yard, and Londell Lee, a touchdown to give UT Martin seven more. Yeah, and they did a great job. They got an empty package right there that put, uh, you know, their receiver versus our linebacker, and, and we didn't really cover them that well. And they, they took advantage of the personnel and a great fourth down call by their staff and uh, exposed our weakness. So at this point, it, as you go into the half, team down 21-9 to nine after that quick start, what are you telling your team in the locker room? Literally just told them, you, you, you've got to understand, you don't have to lose anymore. Like, you know, go win the game. Just relax and go win the game. And, uh, you know, it took us a couple minutes in the third quarter to get going. But once we got back out there, I think our kids really took to the message. And uh, it, was, it was a real neat experience if you were at the game, especially on the sideline, to see how our kids came together. And uh, hopefully they can bottle that energy up that they had and the fight that they had and carry it over to the next game. Well, let's see how that second half played out. We'll take it in the third quarter. At this point, Tennessee Tech is down 21-9 to to start off the third quarter. After a Tech three and out, so this is the first Martin drive, a first and 10 from the 33-yard line. It is a pass complete to Ben Axline, 27 yards. It continues the drive before on a third down and three. This is from the Tennessee Tech 13-yard line. His name is LeDevin Fair. He led Martin with 47 yards rushing and goes in for the end zone. So now, Coach, team down 28-9 to in the contest. Right. No, you know, just proud of our kids. Nothing was really going right at this point for us. And uh, they just kept plugging away, kept fighting, kept trying to make plays. And 
Uh, you can see here Jordan Smith. I'm so excited for him. Great young man, great leader on our team, making plays the last two weeks. That was a third down and 10. Golden Eagles on this lengthy drive, late stages of the third quarter, would actually convert on three third down opportunities like this one, a third and five from the UT Martin 21-yard line. We've discussed the wheels of Michael Bird's song. He finds a way to scamper for 13 yards, takes it down to the UT Martin 8 near the end of the third quarter, and coach this lengthy drive seemed to help set the tone as we'll go into the fourth, your team down 28-9, but they start to get things going. Yeah, it just gave us some momentum, gave us some confidence, uh, you know, to, to try to mount a comeback, and uh, this was the start of it. You know, we didn't get it in the end zone, and we had to kick a field goal there to make sure that it, you know, stayed within the points of two-possession game. So that was a field goal by Madonia, 25 yards, made it 28-12. And I know, Coach, this is yep, one of the plays the of the play. year. This is the play right here that we could look back four or five years from now and say it turned the program around, which you'd hate to say that in a loss. But, you know, it really brought our sideline together and, and everybody really – started competing at a level we've never seen since we've been here. After a Tennessee Tech three and out, they force Martin to three and out. Golden Eagles get the ball back. How about that catch by Josh Cunningham? 35 yards in the UT Martin territory. Tech down 16 at this point, 28-12. The very next play, here's a short pass to Yeedy Thainwright. The freshman takes it 24 yards. Golden Eagles are on the move, gets it down to the 22-yard line of UT Martin. And then, Coach, two plays later, from one freshman to another, enter Andrew Goldsmith. He gets his first rushing touchdown of his career. He almost fell down. He was limping with his, with his ankle sprain. We were giving him a hard time, but uh, it was very well blocked by the, by the offensive line versus a blitz. And now it's time to uh, go for two. It's cool because at this point, we all knew we were going to make this. And that's, that's what you want. I mean, nobody had any doubts that this wasn't going to going to be executed properly. All right, executed properly. Wide open there is Alex Carling. So now it's a one-possession game. Golden Eagles very much in this. It's 28-20, but on the first play of Martin's drive, a pass Troy Cook 51 yards to Kyle Carrick help wrestle some of that momentum back for UT Martin. They would end up kicking a field goal. Golden Eagles down by 11. Michael Bird's song rolls around, throws it to Jordan Smith, and he gets this one for 30 yards. Coach helps bring the Golden Eagles back into it. No question. And our kids never, ever, ever wavered. They just kept playing, kept their head down and kept playing. That's all we can ask. Drive ends up getting a field goal, 31-23, so Tech is forced to do the onside kick, and Tay Martin takes it right back the other way to the house. I mean, obviously in that situation, desperation, got to get the onside kick. Yeah, but that's that's embarrassing right there. We got we got guys that are responsible to hit that guy to make sure it doesn't happen. We didn't get it coached up, didn't get executed, and hopefully we learn from that and, and improve and not let it happen again. So that made it 38-23. The final score, as you'll see, 44-23. There was a pick six on the final play of the game as we take you through the number, 17 out of 30. 274 yards for Birdsong. He was also the Golden Eagles leading ground gainer. 13 carries, 56 yards. And as Coach discussed earlier, Jordan Smith, a nice game. Three catches for 79 yards. So, Coach, with this loss, much in it, but of course, a, a solid comeback. It seems like there are some stuff to build off of. There is. I mean, you, you just, we don't want to make a living on making excuses about how well we played in the loss. Like, we lost, and it, it hurts, and our kids don't like it, and we have to learn from it. So, you know, hopefully we can get to a point where we're not talking about loss after loss and all the, you know, all the moral victories because that's not going to get us where we need to be. I was really proud of our kids. I mean, you look at the halftime. They had 11 first downs at halftime. We had six. We finished up with 20. They finished up with 18. Uh, rushing, we outrushed them 79 to 28. Com third down conversions, they converted 20% of the third downs in the second half. We converted 44. So there's, we come out and we did some really nice things. I just hope we can continue to bottle that up and take it now to the next game and understand we don't have to keep losing. We can go win a game. Well, it's the first full weekend of Ohio Valley Conference action. So let's see what else went down across the league presenting the OVC scoreboard and standings. Wouldn't you know that's brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. Eastern Illinois, a 56-35 win, number 16 Panthers. They won their third consecutive game, scored 35 points in the second half. It was actually tied 21-21 after Austin P took the opening kickoff back, but the Panthers roll in that contest. It was a battle down in Murray State, and after a Connor Mitchell missed 38-yard field goal with only two seconds left, Southeast Missouri, they get their first 
win of the year. And the only other game going on, it was at a conference for number three, Jacksonville State. 29-point win in Lynchburg, handing Liberty its first home loss since the 2014 season, where senior quarterback Eli Jenkins, another big game, OVC Offensive Player of the Week with 345 yards of total offense. Now, moving on to the OVC standings. And, Coach, you see the top three teams, Eastern Illinois, Martin, and Seamoth wins. But there's Tennessee Tech. They, of course, have a win as well. No question. And, uh, you know, we've got a great opportunity this week with uh, Eastern Kentucky coming in. And uh, if we can take care of business, we can kind of at least maintain ourselves there in the upper echelon of the conference, which is all we can ask for at this point. Well, there you have it for the scoreboard and standings. We are just getting underway here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. We'll run through a lot of segments, so we're first going to take a quick break. Once again, right here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. Wherever, whenever cheering for whoever. There's one place to go for free OBC sports. The OBC Digital Network. Back here on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Well, it's the time of the show that we let you get to know a Golden Eagle a little bit more. Enter freshman Yeedy Thainrat, Tennessee Tech starting running back. So presenting the player profile, that's brought to you by TTSports.com. My name is E.D. Thanrat. I'm a true freshman. I play running back. I started playing football in 2008 when I was 11 years old. My earliest memory was my first time running the football. I outran everybody. Got to the far yard line, saw the pylon. Uh, before I even walked in the end zone, I spiked the ball. I started jumping up and down. Thought I scored my first touchdown, but I really didn't. Um, they laughed at me. Ever since then, my coaches told me I have to run past the goalposts every time I score. I was born in Liberia, Monrovia. I moved to the United States in 2003. I lived in San Antonio, Texas for five years. Um, I recently live in Philadelphia. I have a little brother and two older sisters. I came here with my grandmother and seven cousins. And my family has really been motivators. Uh, they kept me, kept my head straight. They're really strict parents. Um, they kept me off the streets and always pushed me to be the best at everything that I do. Seeing all my, all my teammates go, um, we have breaks, get to go back home and see their family, sometimes bothers me, but I have to deal with it. I, I talk to my family every day through FaceTime and all of that, so it keeps me, keeps me level-headed. Well, my little brother, he motivates me. He's back home, he looks up to me a lot, always cheering me on. And another thing is uh, trying to prove everybody wrong. Back in high school, I had an injury, yeah, and Doors got shut, so I have, I'm here to prove everybody that I could do it. On my senior year, my last game, I was committed to Boston College. I had, I had scholarships from a lot of schools. Um, I fractured my ankle. Everything went down south. Uh, doctors told me I wouldn't be playing for a year and a half. Um, co colleges heard that. They backed off. They didn't want nothing to do with me. Injuries went on, but I kept faith in God. It was days where I felt like giving up, didn't feel like playing no more, didn't feel like doing anything. But my, my aunt, who I call my mom, she, she motivated me to keep going on. We went to church, kept praying, and I'm back on my feet. It hasn't been a year yet, and I'm playing football again. I walked on the Temple football. Um, I thought I was going to be able to play there. They told me they wasn't going to invite me to camp, but they had connections here with Coach Satterfield. Called Coach Satterfield, and Coach Satterfield gave me a second chance. He said, I give you the opportunity to come participate in camp and see what you can do and try to earn a scholarship. Came here as a walk-on too. That's why I chose here. That's my only chance I had. Uh, it's, it's a big difference from high school to, to college. Everybody's faster, everybody's bigger, everybody's stronger than you. So, like, my first time carrying the ball, I seen the hole open up, it was huge. As soon as I stepped in it, it closed, it closed very fast. I had to learn to adjust to the speed of the game which I'm doing well at, and every little detail counts. My goals for this year, I want to lead the team in rushing, um, hopefully get all conference as a true freshman. Um, I want to get better every day. Um, the mentality is the team. We all want to win. We're all focused, and we all have a goal, same goal. 
Man, Coach, I mean, he seems like an impressive young man and a world of potential at the running back position. Yeah, he's unbelievable. I mean, one of the hardest working guys on, this, on the team. Uh, you know, he's a leader already. He's not afraid to talk to the team, you know, after the games, after, you know, after the tough loss this past weekend. He was the one in the middle of the locker room uh, getting, getting people right. And so, so fortunate. I mean, it's a blessing to have him. Thank goodness, you know, Temple called us and alerted us that, if, you know, if we needed to run him back there to take care of us. And they had one up there that we could get in on, and, and they sent us Yidi, and Yidi walked on, and he wasn't a walk on for too long. And uh, he's just a, a special kid. I know he's got, you know, some great things and coming up for him, and hopefully he finishes the year like he started, and if he does, we'll, we'll win some games. And a nice game for Yidi Thainrat this past weekend against UT Martin. When you talk about UT Martin, one of the greats at the quarterback position in their program history is current Golden Eagle wide receiver coach Derek Carr. So let's get to know him a little bit more, and we'll do it through the eyes of his wife. So introducing, we're hanging with Harper Satterfield. It's time for Visits with Sarah, and that is presented by Pepsi. Miss Shelley, how did you meet? Derek and I met, um, well, it's kind of a funny story because we went to the same college, the University of Tennessee at Martin, um, and he actually saw me my very first day on campus. So he knew who I was ever since I was there, and um, I just knew him as the quarterback for UTM. And I never really thought about it, gave him the time of day until he started to come around my senior year, and um, I kind of blew him off for a little while, but I finally texted him one night to go see the new Hunger Games movie, and um, thankfully he decided to do it, and ever since that night we stay together into our engagement. <laughs> what is a funny story from when you were dating? Probably, um, well, we were married, but I still consider that dating. Um, we were living in Philadelphia, and he had gotten us tickets to a baseball team um, to a game in Jersey. So we had went early and we ate across from the stadium, and we noticed that there was a lot of people there before the game. And we were thinking, that's weird. Who tailgates for baseball games? Um, so we went to the stadium when it was time for the game to start, and all of the gates were closed. And, um, we asked one of the teenagers in the parking lot what they were there for, and it was for a Wiz Khalifa concert, that the game was the next week. And that was his planning, so. Miss Shelley, where was your favorite move? Our favorite move was probably Philadelphia, because it was during our first year being married. Um, but I would have to say that moving back here to Tennessee is like coming home, and I enjoy everyone here and what this city has to offer. What was your favorite Valentine's Day gift? Probably the first Valentine's we spent together because it was that awkward, we just started dating, but here's this romantic holiday, what do we get each other? Um, and he got me a card with dogs on it and it said, I like you so much, I want to lick your face or something mm -hmm. like that, so it was cute. Miss Shelley, what was your favorite vacation? My favorite vacation was when we got engaged um, at the beach. It was actually our first vacation um, with his family, and he had my family show up as a surprise the night that he proposed on the beach. So that's by far my favorite vacation. Uh, some great stories from Derek Carr's wife, Shelly Carr, and Coach, doing a little bit of research for the Martin game. He was a heck of a quarterback at UT Martin. Yeah, I mean, he holds all the records, all the passing records, and I uh, was fortunate enough we signed him while I was still there, and I never got to coach him because he was redshirting the, the last season I was at Martin before I went to Chattanooga. But special guy, special family, special to me. Uh, I felt so bad when, when him and Shelly got married, and then they came back, you know, to Philadelphia, and literally, like, we would – it would be Sunday night, and I'd be going home at 2 in the morning, and he would have to stay and do <laughs> scripts and cards, and he'd go home, every, you know, at 4 o'clock, she'd come get him. So it was a rough start to their marriage, but I'm glad that, you know, we got this opportunity and I was able to bring him back down to Tennessee. and. He's going to be a great, great, he is a great coach, but he's going to be an even better coordinator and head coach one day. So from one assistant coach, let's take you over to another one, and that is the assistant coach, cornerbacks coach, Bobby Maffei, as we go mic'd up with him, presenting the mic'd up segment, and that's brought to you by the OBC Digital Network. Now, look at this, guys. You got a press look here and an off look here. So, Brandon, who releases first? 
Oh, oh. Terror, Terror, you're in? Oh, even, even, now we're covering. Stay down, stay down. Eyes wired in, eyes wired in. Straight to one on ones, Dami. Gotta compete. Great opportunity to compete. Miles, eyes wired in. You're even up first here. Let's go, Ben, hustle off the field. Let's go. Roll out. Don't bunk up progression, Miles. Don't bunk up progression. Go. Let's do it. Here we go. Finish, finish, Miles. Go. Get out. Stay, sir. Right through the back. Finish. Miles, just rush your power level, right? Be nice and long so you tell yourself to get out. Power level. I release first and I pick him. So now Eric can release outside clean. Okay, so I want a me, me, me call and a you, you, you call. I want you, I want you to go straight through him right here. So when Eric releases, sit there. Uh, Ricky runs right through me. Good. Now hey, Malik, just make sure, right? Stay right through that back pocket. He sticks again, bang. Yeah, I got, I was on my Cause you're, cause there's palms, right? Yeah. As soon as you see, you can tell he's pressing vertical, right? When he presses vertical, bang, just get your eyes back to the belt buckle. Hey, Malik, eyes, right? All about your eyes, give me a pre-snap thought process. Eyes, pre-snap thought process. AFC, guys, AFC. He can't touch you, you're so fast, right? Let's go. Loose. Walk out. Pedal. Stem. Straight. Stem. Straight. Fall forward. Just like riding the bike, Eric. Just like riding the bike. Right? Good. I old man can't break anymore. Coach, you had Bobby Maffei kind of running all over the place. Seems like he wanted to play out there. Yeah, he's awesome, man. He was another one of our Temple guys. And, uh, you know, those guys, when they go and work for us at Temple, they work their rear ends off. And I knew, you know, a year ago when we would talk about I wanted this job, he was coming with us. And, he, like Derek, he's going to be a great defensive coordinator. He's going to be a great head coach. He's a son of a coach, and uh, we're just blessed to have him here because he is a, he's one of the best DB coaches in the country. I don't care what, what level, what division. He's legit. Well, it's time to take a break now on the show, but when we come back, we'll see what else happened in the world of Golden Eagle Athletics as a couple teams started OVC action. And, of course, we will preview Tennessee Tech's matchup with Eastern Kentucky. So don't go anywhere on the Marcus Satterfield Show. What are you looking for? A place to belong? A path to a career? A way to make things better? Do you wonder what opportunity looks like? Explore your answers here. Change your world at Tennessee Tech University. Visit tntech.edu slash change. Back here on the Marcus Satterfield Show, presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Golden Eagle Athletics were in full force this weekend. It was a big weekend for soccer. So I'm going to stop talking, and we're going to hear from Director of Athletics, Mark Wilson, introducing the Golden Eagle update that's brought to you by the Tech Twitter, at TTU Golden Eagles. The Golden Eagle soccer team opened Ohio Valley Conference play this weekend, going 2-0 on the weekend, improving to 6-4-1 overall. Great way to start OVC play in first place. On Friday, they came from behind to beat Jacksonville State by a score of 2-1. to one. Kerrigan Owens had the first goal unassisted. Second goal was scored by Kalen Pruitt, assisted by Owens. And then on Belmont, against Belmont on Sunday, they beat the Bruins 2-0. to zero. The first goal of the game was scored by Katie Shipley, assisted by Marissa Rouse and Michaela Keys. Second goal, unfortunately, Belmont put it in their own net, but a great way to start for head coach Steve Springthorpe and his squad, first place in the Ohio Valley Conference. On Sunday, they'll travel to Moorhead State in the only contest that they have this week. Golden Eagle Volleyball team opened OVC play 1-1. One one. They beat Eastern Kentucky by a score of 3-1 on Friday night. Shalane Little had 17 kills for the Golden Eagles. Shanice James, uh, four blocks. Sharon Anderson had a phenomenal match with 49 assists and 28 digs. A busy night for her. On Saturday, they lost to Moorhead State by a score of 0-3. to three. Alyssa Povey had seven kills. Sharon Anderson had 22 assists. That put her over 3,000 assists in her Golden Eagle career. They're at Tennessee State this week on Wednesday and at Belmont at 6 o'clock on Friday. The Golden Eagle tennis team was at the Southern Intercollegiate 
Some wonderful individual victories for head coach Kenny Doyle's uh, team. Log on to TTUsports.com for all the results of that. Men's golf team is at the Derek Dolneck Invitational in Madison, Illinois. Women's golf team is at the Chris Bannister Fall Classic in Gadsden, Alabama. And the Red Hot Cross Country teams who are off this week, they will travel to Louisville this week to take place in the Greater Louisville Classic. The men's cross country team, they continue to be ranked 10th in the South. Back down to coaching our great host, Dylan Vazano. Well, thank you, Mark. It's now time in our show to preview Tennessee Tech's upcoming opponent. Golden Eagles will be at home for the first time in a month this Saturday against the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky. So introducing this week's opponent, and that's brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. And Coach, Eastern Kentucky comes to town, and they're coming in off of a bye week. And I know entering the OVC slate this year, they were picked pretty high in the preseason. Yeah, they're very talented. they got a lot of transfers. Uh, they got, you know, Two good quarterbacks. They got Matty Mock from Missouri transferred in, who's making some plays for him, and some big wideouts like we faced last week that always gives us issues because we're not very tall in the perimeter. A uh, defense is very, very sound, a lot like our defense. Uh, they play very, uh, a very sound scheme. They play their gaps. They play coverage. They make you beat them over a, a you know amount of play. You got to build up plays in a drive. You don't just big, big play them to death. So it's going to be a, a huge challenge. But you're right. At least we get to come back home and. And, and play in front of our fans. Yeah, that's got to be pretty exciting. I mean, uh, I know that the first game, September 1st, and now October 1st, a month later after three consecutive on the road. You guys must be pretty pumped. We are, but, you know, I would like to say that's why we haven't been winning, but that's not. I mean, to be on the road really is a blessing for a young team because we're in a hotel, we're together, there's no distractions. We really get to form as a team. And I think us being on the road these last three weeks has been huge for the development of our football team. And we are glad to be back and, and to show, you know, how we've improved since that Wofford game. We hope that people will come out and give us a chance and, and let us start a win streak. All right, Coach. Well, uh, good luck Saturday night. We need all we can get. But, uh, you know, you make your own luck. Like, how, how well do we work out? You know, how do we work this week? Do we practice? Because practice is everything. Do we practice good this week? Do we prepare? And that's, that's how we'll create the luck. And hopefully, again, everybody come out. Let's have a big crowd. It's going to be a great night. Should be comfortable weather-wise, and let's see what we can do. Let's start this, start to get wins, and understand we don't have to lose anymore. Well, hopefully, a great night. It begins six o'clock with the kickoff. Hey, listen, you can watch the game on WCTE. You can listen to it on ninety-eight point five Kiss FM, and of course, you can read all about it in the Cookville Herald Citizen. That's going to do it for this week on the Marcus Satterfield Show. We'll see you next week. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash & Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash & Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash & Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050.